Hi everyone. Uh, in this series of videos, uh, what we're going to be doing is looking at some of the various features of Motion Builder to be able to edit and export your animations to game engines like Unreal and Unity. And uh, in this particular set of videos, we're going to be using all of the assets here that come prepackaged with Motion Builder. Uh, there's this tutorials folder here. Uh, where we have the Agor character and a whole bunch of other characters that we can use. And we also have this Previs Moves folder here that has a bunch of different motion capture already pre-recorded. And uh, we're going to be using these animations in such a way that they would represent uh, data that you would export as FBX from Motive, which is our native motion capture system, uh, to Motion Builder. And um, if you do have your motion capture export to FBX files or C3D files, you can add your folder here to the asset browser. The asset browser is a way of being able to quickly access all of your files without having to dig around your file system. So in this left hand panel here, if you right click and go to add favorite path, you could just add whatever path has uh, those animations, whatever folder has all those animations and they'll show up here inside the asset browser and you can just click and drag them in. But for these tutorials we're going to be using these pre-built uh, pieces uh, to kind of work with what we're going to be, the different concepts we're going to be working through for this tutorial. So to start this off, um, we're going to be talking about in this video the animation layer and the control rig specifically. Uh, the animation layer is a way to non-destructively uh, edit your motion capture animation. So your motion capture animation will always show up on this base layer here. And the animation layer will be the non-destructive layer where you can keyframe objects on top of it. Now you can keyframe directly onto the skeleton, although it's suggested that you don't usually do that. Uh, you usually want to use a control rig so that uh, you get the realistic animation coming across that um, has the follow through either through a full chromatic or inverse chromatic rig. Uh, also typically when you are working with motion capture it's good to work with the, just the basic skeleton rigging of a character. Uh, a lot of rigs that you might find online will have uh, all sorts of control rigs on them and sometimes they can kind of interrupt or make it difficult to get the animations to blend with your motion capture. So usually it's most desirable to work with a file that doesn't have any special controls on it already. And this control rig allows you to add those controls, those types of controls that you would get with a special control rig uh, without having to go in and, and script or rig all of those different pieces and add all the particular constraints. So uh, if you look here at the previs moves, there's a, a move here called box jab, and all of these uh, files I believe are characterized. Some of them have models that go along with them, and we don't want any of that anim animation. I'm going to strip these down so that they represent uh, pretty much what you would be getting from the motion capture system directly. So uh, usually when you would go over and drag one of these files in, you could just import these with all takes. But in this particular situation, we're going to go to options to strip out some of the information that um, wouldn't normally come through from the motion capture system. So I'm going to go down here to options, and you'll see here in the open options, there's a bunch of these little diskette icons next to um, next to different uh, parts of uh, what would be contained in this file. Okay, So what we're going to do here is we're going to strip this file of the stuff that we don't need. So I know this thing has got characterization on it, so I'm going to shut off the characters. Um, I know it's got a mesh, so we want to get rid of models. And I'm also going to do this in this uh, in animation as well. Um, so we want characters, we want models, and I believe there's also, this particular file has a light. so. I'm going to get rid of the light, and uh, all we're going to want to do is import from file this this take here. And if there were more than one take in this file, they would show up all here listed. So I'm going to click on open, and what that should do is it should just bring in a skeleton without any characters um, automatically created. So the process for being able to um, uh, retarget motion capture animation as you did in a previous tutorial is to characterize the um, skeletal animation information, uh, have your character uh, characterized as well, the model that you're targeting the animation to, 
and then uh, go to the source here and link the uh, model that you want the animation to be retargeted to as the character and then the source be the animation that you want to play on that character. So uh, you know the process is characterization of the animation, characterization of the model, and then linking the two together. Uh, so we're just going to characterize the motion capture piece because that's the part you're typically going to have to get. A lot of times you're not going to get your motion capture animation with a T-pose. And I just want to go over that again with you guys real quick. So if I open up the uh, scene here and go down to hips and select hips, easy way to recharacterize this. And I could go in and select each joint and zero them all out, but Motion Builders get some features that we can zero them all out at once. So if I right click on hips and go down to select branches, what they'll do is they'll select all of the branches of the hierarchy of the model. And then if you right click the selection and go to zero, we're going to zero rotation. And what they'll do is zero the rotation of the entire motion capture. So now we've got a nice T-pose. That's something else that I'd like to mention here too is that uh, typically when you rig your files, a lot of times uh, character modelers like to model in M-poses, which is great. And uh, the problem with M-poses though with motion capture is a lot of the time it's defined, motion capture is defined off of a T-pose because it's used as a way to calibrate the system. So um, you want to be rigging your characters in an M-pose or you want to force them into an M-pose by zeroing out or, or rotating the joints to be in a T-pose. Uh, it doesn't always work well rotating it, so that's why I often suggest uh, making sure when you rig the character you rig it in a T-pose uh, as opposed to rigging it in the M-pose that you might get from a character modeler. Uh, anyway, once uh, we have this forced into a T-pose, uh, we can now characterize it. So uh, up here in the Human IK panel, we've got a different, couple of different options. They also appear under here, Create and Define. Um, but I'm just going to click on the button here for Define Skeleton. And uh, a valid skeleton is required. Do you want to define one? Yes, I do. And because I still have all of these joints selected, if you don't have them selected, remember you can go to Select Branches and then um, it'll select all of them. So go down to Select Branches. And I'm going to drag and drop this into where it says hips. So drag and drop this into where it says hips. And you'll see that it adds all of the different um, pieces here for the characterization. And all I have to do is check off this box. It's going to ask me, um, it's going to say something about pose, being posed in the Z position. I think that's because I have this set to local right now. I'm going to hit biped. And uh, now when I play this, it should play the animation. The T-pose is gone, which is fine. Um, but if I go into characters here, we've got a character for the animation here. And what I'm going to do is rename that. So I'm going to right click here in the navigator, go to rename, and I'm going to rename this uh, punch animation. Now when you name anything in, um, whether it's um, animation Maya, animation motion builder, whatever, you don't want to use any spaces or special characters. Um, a lot of times it's best to use all one word or an underscore in between the different words. So just a heads up on that. All right, so um, I've got the punch animation here. Um, and now we need to do, uh, what we need to do is import the character. So if I go down to tutorials here, the tutorials folder, I can drag and drop Agor into our scene. And I'm just gonna do all takes. Now, Agor is already characterized, so if I go over here to the Human IK panel, Agor should show up. Now, if you had your own character here, you would have to characterize that character as well. Okay, So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to select Agor, and then for his source, I'm going to select the punch animation. And now if I hit play, oops, it's not playing. <laughs> it should have been playing the punch animation. Now the reason why I didn't play the punch animation was because of uh, when we imported the Agor file, he had a take 001 on him, a default take, which gets added when you characterize an object. So if we click on the takes here, the box jab should be here, and we should be able to play this now. And you can see that the, um, the punch animation that we characterize is now driving the um, character. So this is a bit of a review of some of the stuff that we've already done. Uh, so now what we're going to do is we're going to add a control rig to this so that we can go in and edit the joints on Agor. Right? We're not going to be touching the animation 
on the punch animations anymore. As a matter of fact, we're going to delete it completely. And uh, we're going to add a control rig. And then we're going to use these animation layers to kind of non-destructively uh, pose his hands. A lot of time when you get motion capture animation, the hands um, aren't posed because I don't know the motion capture system wasn't able to do it or um, they really only wanted the body motion so there's a variety of reasons why um, they might not record this data but what we need to do is we need to pretty much create a control rig for Agor that has that animation on it and that's what baking to a control rig does is it bakes the animation to the control rig there's also a bake to skeleton option which is what you're going to want to do when this thing is finalized. You're going to want all of the animation on the skeleton because you no longer need the control rig. This thing's no longer going to be edited. And uh, you're going to want this thing to be able to be brought into something like Unreal or Unity or Maya even uh, so that you can use these animations and um, you know you're not going to be editing, editing them any further. They're going to be working the way you know they're supposed to be working already. So uh, to do that, uh, what we need to do is go up to our human IK panel here, change this to Agor, and his source is punch animation. So you want to make sure it's Agor and the source is punch animation. And in the big blue button here, you click on the big blue button and then there's this bake option. And there's two different options here. There's bake plot to skeleton, and then there's bake plot to control rig, and then there's a settings button. Um, there's multiple settings that you can use for either of these. But we're just going to do bake plot to control rig. And it's going to ask what type of control rig do you want to create. And we're going to want to do an FK IK rig, full chromatic inverse chromatic rig. All right, so now uh, that we have that, Agor is going to have these controls on him that we can then move and edit. So uh, if I grab on this control here and move it, you can see Agor's hand moves. Now, um, if I move my playhead, though, he snaps right back into place, which you know, you're probably like, oh, we got this control rig that doesn't really help us very much, and it's snapping to his original animation, and that's where this animation layers comes in. It allows us to key changes onto these controls, right, that are on here. And let me uh, bring up the visibility here. So if I go to display and then X-ray, we can now see the controls. Um, the red um, spheres represent the controls for the rig. The yellow um, lines and um, yellow spheres represent the um, joints and the blue ones represent the sub um, controls which are things like elbows because you're going to be animating on the red spheres uh, you don't typically you won't typically be animating on the blue ones because those are like the secondary motions from the full inverse chromatic uh, full inverse chromatic rig that we created so this is um, plotted to that control rig and we could have just control, created a control rig on Agor to begin with and started animating on it like you would do a normal keyframe animation in Motion Builder um, and you would do with like a normal control rig uh, but this really is powerful stuff because we get the base animation for Agor here so if we want to do something like pose up his hands it makes it real simple to do and we no longer need the original skeleton that's in the file. We can actually get rid of it because now this animation has been plotted to that control rig and, and it's going to be on there forever uh, unless we remove it. So if I go over here to scenes, <clears throat> we're going to get rid of the, um, the motion capture that we imported from the uh, previs moves folder and that's labeled as hips here. So I'm going to select the branches on hips and then let right click and go to delete confirm. And it's going to ask me a bunch of questions. It's going to say some things can't be deleted. That's fine. You're going to want to delete the character. You don't want the character in there anymore. And you pretty much just want to say yes to all. And that will get rid of everything that had to do with that um, skeleton that we imported, that animation that we imported. And you can see here um, the animation is still on Agor because it's being driven off of that control rig that we created. Now, uh, what we want to do is we want to pose up his fingers. He doesn't look very convincing, right? Just kind of like chopping in front of us. We want him to be punching, right? So that's his left hand, right? That's his left hand that we have selected there. So if I go over here and look at the left hand, and uh, if we look at the human IK panel, there's these arrows, right? Um, those arrows allow us to dig down deeper into the animation. 
uh, not into the image, into the control rig. And there's actually controls for all the individual fingers. So what we're going to do is I'm going to um, control click all of the controllers for the fingers themselves. I'm not going to select the thumb. And uh, with those selected, right, you're going to want to make sure your setting is to local for the transforms, for the reference modes. And uh, we're going to go to rotate. And the reason why you want it to be local is so that it's in line with the finger. If it's global, it's going to look something like that, which is relative to the world. So I'm going to go back to local. And if we rotate this, we can actually rotate them, and it'll rotate all of the fingers in the hand together. And if you need to pose these additionally, you can actually you know translate them a little bit as well. You need to like kind of drag them out. And the other thing we're going to do is we're going to pose the thumb now. And the thumb, he's not going to rotate as easily um, the way the fingers did. So you pretty much just want to use the translate here. So we're going to use the translate to kind of move the thumb in where we want it to be. All right. Igor's rig is kind of funky. All right, there we go. So it just kind of collapses his finger in here. All right, so I have his hand posed up now. And uh, what we're going to want to do now is add one of those animation layers here. So I'm going to hit the, uh, I'm going to go over here to the animation layers panel, which is right here in the lower right hand side, kind of towards the middle. And I'm going to click on the, it's like a paper icon with a plus sign. And I'm going to rename uh, this layer to be left hand. All right, so left hand is there. And uh, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to key this thing. And unfortunately, I'm not in frame zero, but I'm going to key it here anyway. So I'm going to hit the key button. And what that should do now is it should keep his hand in a closed fist position the entire animation. And if we want, we can actually move this key back to the first frame so that it um, is the entire duration of the animation. Now the cool part about this is uh, it doesn't destroy the base animation layer here. So if I mute this layer, his hand goes back to the chop position that was in. So I hit the mute button here, and it goes back to that chop position. Pretty neat, right? So uh, what we could do from here is um, there's also this weight feature which allows us to weigh in between the two different layers. And you can see there's a slider. So if I um, go back to the end of the animation here, if I, I think I've got the weight all the way up here, and um, I select the um, the controls here, and uh, key them again, <clears throat> what I should be able to do is go back to here and key the weighing here. So I could go over here to um, weight. Actually, I don't want to do that. Maybe I want to set this back a little bit. Alright, so um, I'm going to rewind here. And uh, oh, I already had the weight to zero. Alright, so I'll close the, I'll have the fist open here. And I'll key the weight. I'm sorry. I'll key the weight instead here. And then I'll key the weight at the end of the animation. Or actually, maybe, maybe right about here. On his way up, he'll close his fist. So I'll, um, I'll set this to 100 and key it again. And his fist should close, should be open, and then close and finish the punch. If we want, we can go to the end of this animation, right? And set it back to zero and key it again. So now what this should do is it should close and then open. Pretty neat, right? So you're able to transition between the uh, original and the, um, and the new animation state. So just to go over this one last time, um, I'm gonna go over to the other side here. And uh, what we'll do is we'll go back to the parent of the rig. Sorry, my uh, human IK panel is a bit 
small here. There we go. And um, I'm going to select the other hand and uh, I'll just control click all the different fingers and I'll rotate them in like that. Select the thumb, kind of move this into place. And what you're going to typically want to do is create another layer for the other hand. That way you can control them individually. So I'll go over here and create a new layer. I'll rename this layer right hand. And um, if I key this now on the right hand layer, and I move that key back to frame one, now his fist is closed for the other side. Pretty neat, right? So the what I would typically do here <clears throat> is save this out as the animation on the control rig because you always want the control rig animation to be able to refer back to if you have to make tweaks and changes. When you lose that file, you got to go through this whole process again. So I would do something like file, save as, um, and then save it as you know agor underscore control rig, right? And then I do another save as, do file save as, and I would do agor underscore punch baked or something like that, or agor baked punch. Um, that way um, I would have the one, and that would be the one that we would import into Unity, would be the baked version of this. So to bake this down after you did those saves, you go up here to the file menu, uh, not the file menu, the human IK blue button menu here, and go down to bake, and then plot to skeleton. And now this thing is plotted to the skeleton. You'll see that he no longer um, has a source. There's no control rig. There's also the original punch animation is no longer there. And uh, you can see um, that it's ready to export. So you would just do a file save, save as the baked version, FBX file. And this thing would be ready to come into your game engine or to whatever other application you're going to be using this for. So that's a brief uh, lesson on how to work with animation layers and uh, control rigs. Um, hopefully um, you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video.